All right, welcome to How's That Work? My name is Mrs. Foster, and we're going to go ahead and look at how do things go? How do things stop? How does this all work? And so to do that, we're going to go ahead and look at something called force. A force is known as a push or pull on an object. And to help you remember what force means, think of a door. To open a door, sometimes you have to push it. To, to open a door, sometimes you have to pull it. It is a push or a pull to open that door, and it takes some force to do that. And that's what force is. It is a push or a pull. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to pause the video. I want you to look around you and find three things that you have to pull or push. So go ahead and pause it and do that now. All right, what did you find? Hi. Here are some of the things that I thought about as I looked around me. Things that we might pull are opening a drawer, maybe pulling the cord and turning on a ceiling fan. Sometimes we have to pull the brush down through our hair. There are things we have to push too. Vacuuming, maybe moving a chair closer to the table, you scoot or push in your chair, or when you close the refrigerator. So those things are a force, a push and a pull. But now we're gonna go ahead and look at two different types of forces. And the first one here is a contact force. So here we can see the baseball player Ready, swings, bam, he makes contact with that ball. Forces that act between two objects that are physically touching each other is a contact force. They have to touch each other. So this example right here is a great example of a contact force. Two objects that are physically touching each other. Now, so the next type of force then is called a non-contact force. This is a force that's applied to an object without having any physical contact with the object. So here we can see people were falling through the air and that force is gravity. That is an example of a non-contact force. It's something that pulls things down to the ground without having any contact with that object. So as we look at non-contact forces, we have gravitational force, magnetic force or electrostatic force. Gravitational force is basically the attraction between all objects that have mass. So when you jump up, you come back down because you have an attraction to the earth below you. Magnetic force is the attraction force between certain metals and magnets. And then we're also going to look at electrostatic force, the attraction and repulsion repulsive force, that means it pushes away, between objects due to their electrical charges. So all these forces have some way influences objects around them. Now, here is some just quick examples of contact force. A lot of times when we think of gravitational force or gravity, we think of the apple falling out of the tree, and that is an example of gravitational force. Now, magnetic force, we of course think of magnets and how that draws metals to them. And lastly, we can look at this electrostatic force. I love this example right here. Have you ever rubbed a balloon against a wall and saw that your hair will rise up because of it? Or you're wearing your favorite hat and it comes, your hair then when you take it off kind of stands on end or going after going down a slide? Yes, all those examples are electrostatic force. It is influencing the hair to move even though things are not touching it. Okay, so I want you again to get ready to investigate. Look around and find three examples of gravitational force around you or gravitational forces that you know. Pause the video, think of it, come up with three examples on your own. Fabulous. Here are the ones that I thought of. Are they the same ones as you? I thought about leaves falling from a tree. 
a thrown football and how that comes back down to the player. Or jumping on a trampoline. Here we see the dog jumping up and then it comes back down. Those are all great examples of gravitational force. I'd love to see or hear which ones you uh, chose. So make sure in the comments on this video that if you came up with some great examples, make sure you comment below and let me know what you thought of. We're going to go ahead and go on to magnetic force around you. So a very similar thing. I want you to pause the video and find three examples of magnetic force around you. If you can't find something directly around you, maybe think of things that you know are examples of magnetic force. All right, pause the video now. All right, welcome back. Did you find those three? Here is what I thought of. I thought of a compass and how that needle always will move due to magnetic force. I thought of some roller coasters. So here is, we can see a roller coaster and this is a close example of a personal one. I am a huge roller coaster and adventure uh, amusement park person. And so at Six Flags in Great America, they have a roller coaster called V2. And it basically um, sends you forward up and then drops you back down and goes the other way. And here we can see some magnets that it actually uses on its roller coaster to help propel the roller coaster forward and backwards. And then down here, this is not obviously something to have around me, but this is an MRI machine. It stands for Magnetic Resonance Imaging. And I showed a picture here. A lot of times when you get this done, they tell you you have to take out all your jewelry, make sure you don't have any metal on you because it does use magnet, magnets in it. And so you can see they went ahead to show this. They put this metal stand here and you can see when they turn it on that that stand is actually um, um, propelled inside of it and then actually sticks up into this. So that is also a magnetic uh, force that we can see there. Okay. So now we're on to our third one. We're going to find three examples of electrostatic force around you. And I kind of already talked about this a little bit as we introduce this, but I want you to take a minute, pause it, and let me know of electrostatic forces that you find around you. All right, well done. Here are the things that I thought about. A person going down a slide. Have you ever gone down a slide and then touched somebody and felt a shock? Or vice versa, they went down the slide and they touched you and felt a shock? That's an electrostatic force. Um, lightning is an electrostatic force. And then again, uh, I have a person here wearing a winter hat. When she takes this hat off, she, her hair will probably stand up a little bit due to the electrostatic force. So those are my three examples. Again, let me know of the different examples that you found around your house. If they're different from mine, I'd love to see those in the comments below of the different types of forces you found around. Okay, so let's go ahead and review what we've talked about. So a force is a push or a pull on an object. And then we can separate this into two different sets. We can separate it into contact force, which is forces that act between two objects that are physically touching, and non-contact, where it's a force applied without having any physical contact. Examples of non-contact forces, we have gravitational, magnetic, and electrostatic forces. So we can see here the examples that we have talked about. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and check for understanding. Now, what kind of force is this? Here you can see that she is juggling the soccer ball. What kind of force do you think this would be? Take a minute. Did you guess contact force? Well done. Okay, let's see this next one. What kind of non-contact force is this? Here we have someone bungee jumping, and there she goes, and she is falling. 
What is pulling her down? We're looking at non-contact force. What is this non-contact force that is um, causing her to fall? Did you stay gravitational force? If you did, well done. And then lastly, we're going to look at this. What kind of non-contact force is this? So here we can see that we have a train and we have magnets stuck to the bottom of the train. We have north, the polar uh, magnets are north on the bottom and north on the bottom of the train and north on the track. So those actually repel each other and push the train upward. And then we go ahead and have magnets along the side that help push the train forward and then pull the train forward. So here we have some pushes, some pulls, so we definitely know it's a force. But the question is, what kind of force is it? Did you say magnetic force? If you did, well done. If you didn't, it's okay. We're going to go ahead and review this in our next video for next time. But hopefully you understand that forces help things go and stop. And that's how it works. Thank you for joining us and we will see you next time. Make sure that you click on the upper right hand corner for the link.